What would have happened, guys, if I couldn't hold it 10 minutes? Just wandering around can get pretty difficult when it comes to my child's life. So hello, today we're gonna talk about the things I miss from the US now that I do not live there. Let's go. And we're gonna skip the friends and family because I think that's obvious. Let's talk about the other things. And so first, if you're new here, hi, I'm Anne. I'm a single mom of one. And I've been living in Mexico for the past almost three years. And generally, I would say I don't miss that much in the US, but now that I start to think about the little things, there's actually quite a number of things that I do miss. Some of which fall in the bratty category and some which I think are just legit. Okay, so first things first, we'll just start with this morning. I just took my son to school. We were running a little bit late because last night I realized that I had not gone shopping for his lunch. <sighs> and yes, they do sell lunch at school. However, it tends to be very entree heavy. And so in particular, Alex loves their quesadillas but they also have like moletes and synchronizadas. But it's usually not really enough for him to feel like he's had a full meal. He can of course buy as much as he wants to, but I don't necessarily want him filled with quesadillas. Anyway, so I usually give him some fruits. We're gonna work our way up to veggies, but right now I give him some fruits. And late last night, I realized that I didn't have any, like I didn't go shopping because life. And unfortunately, places that sell fruits and veggies close well before 10 o'clock at night. There just wasn't any place I could go. There was no way for me to Google if a random random place happened to be open because a lot of places here don't have websites or they don't have Google Maps. They don't have like, it's just, that's not kind of the place that I live in. And so many places here do not open till eight, nine, or even 10 o'clock in the morning. And with my son's school starting at eight in the morning, this really doesn't help. Luckily this morning, I knew that Chedraoui, which is a larger chain grocery store would be open around 7.30. And so I was able last minute to take a taxi to the Chedraoui, grab some fruits and such, and then take another taxi, take him to school. But that's essentially the only place I could have gone aside from an OXO, which will sometimes have fruits and veggies, but usually not in the early, early morning. Their delivery is a little bit later. So yeah, I miss having 24 hour locations. I miss having Google Maps slash websites that have accurate times on when things are open. I miss those conveniences. And this is a little TMI, but I absolutely miss having free public restrooms that we can go to. I think the expectation is to not use bathrooms in stores, but to use the officially labeled baños publicos, public bathrooms. Here, public restrooms can range from two pesos to five pesos. Merida, the typical was six pesos. Now, I don't necessarily mind that I have to pay so much as they're not everywhere. I can't just run into a gas station or a restaurant or a convenience store or wherever to find these bathrooms. I have to know in advance where these bathrooms are. And yeah, recently I've been looking for new homes in new neighborhoods where I do not know if they even have any. And we had a couple moments where I thought a huge incident was going to occur. Now, luckily, in all occasions, I was able essentially to hold it long enough to run 10 minutes to the nearest public bathroom that I knew about. But yeah, what would have happened guys if I didn't know where those places were or if I couldn't hold it 10 minutes? And also having a kid, like, yeah, the places that I frequent most often, I absolutely already know where the bathrooms are because I have a kid who I feel like has to go to the bathroom way more than I ever did. I miss having reliable postal service. Like I miss it beyond explanation. Now, there are workarounds depending on where I'm getting my mail from or my packages from, but yeah, it's nothing as simple as the US at all. The trash pickup system in the US is so much easier, in my opinion, than here in Mexico. So of course, different parts of Mexico do things very differently, but the way I have to do it in my current location is four days a week, I have trash pickup, which sounds amazing but I have to have my trash in the designated location by around 8.30, although once the holidays really begin, it does get pushed back to nine o'clock, which is pretty cool. So that really is the trash, but that's my window. And so if I miss that window, I can't take my trash out there because then the dogs, etc., will get to it. So I have these four days that I have to wake up early enough to take my trash out. Unlike the US where it's very common to have your own personal like garbage trash can outside where anytime you've got trash, you can just put it in the bin and then you just have to remember to pull the bin out once a week or the night before. Whereas here, courtesy says, I can't take my trash out the night before 
because then the dogs will definitely get in. So I miss big house trash cans. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in the same category of like not the best websites, hard to get information, etc. I chose this particular city because I'm in the mountains. I love the weather here much more than kind of the hotter locations you can find in Mexico. But I find that here, and it's obvious, I can't necessarily just go wandering off into the mountains, into the forest, because a lot of it, if not all of it, is private property and so it's really hard for me to sometimes figure out where I'm even allowed to go and so I've had people tell me to get a guide well I've gotten guides and those guides tell me that literally every time I go there I need to go with the guide because the guide is essentially my pass it's, it's my permission to be there because really it's not that I have permission to be there so much as my guide has permission to be there and so yeah, just wandering around can get pretty difficult. Uh, so I wish I knew exactly where I was allowed to without having to like know all the people. Like just a website that told me where I was allowed to walk. That would be cool. That being said, I live in a pretty great city and so I do walk around the city a lot and I'm actually okay with that style of hiking. Okay, so my next video will be on like things I don't miss from the US. And this next item that I do miss is actually gonna be on both lists because it's one of those two-sided coins where I love it and hate it at the same time. And that is overprotectiveness of authority figures. So what do I mean by that? <sighs> on the side that I miss, there have been zip lines that I've gotten onto where sometimes they buckle you up and chain you up exactly like the equipment is intended to. And other times, they're a little more loose with it. Yes, if you've ever gone zip lining or anything, some of those chains are redundant. Some of them are backup. Some of them are what ifs. But when it comes to my life, when it comes to my child's life, uh, there are moments where I'm definitely okay with a little extra oversight and a little more strict adherence to how to use those things properly. So yeah. That's happened a couple times. A word of caution, if you ever come to play here, these slides are super, 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 super steep. So they're really designed for smaller kids with parents who are able to catch them at the end. I've seen so many kids get hurt on this area. I also see it happening in food safety moments, etc. So generally, I live with it, I'm okay with it. I think the risks are acceptable. But yeah, there are times where I have to pause and go, let me look closer just in case because, and the Ferris wheel that I went on, I, I tried to keep a brave face because Alex was there and we went on a couple times, but let me tell you, a part of my mind was going, it's really just a numbers game. Like at some point, this thing has to fall down, like logistically, right? So, so yeah, I, I kind of missed that oversight that extra layer of protection. Okay, and this next one falls under, like we're just gonna call it money, cash. Having a cash system. I can't tell you how many times I've run out of the appropriate change and the person I'm, like the vendor I'm purchasing from doesn't have enough change. And I'm not talking necessarily just the 500 peso bills. I had people who could not break a 50 peso bill, especially if it's early in the morning, right? Vendors early in the morning tend not to have as much change. And so the onus falls on me to be prepared for that. I have to have more exact change. There's also a lot of bills that you have to pay in person sometimes, like not, uh, it's not all the time, it's not every time, but there's a level of having to pay things in person so what do you do like like my rent is due on a particular day of the month and they want cash which means I can't necessarily travel on the first of the month hugely inconvenient with Dia de los Muertos coming around but like that it's just part of it of course yes I can plan ahead and pay early I could maybe sweet talk her into paying late but if I could just pay online, everything would be easier. And this also falls to things like mega cable sometimes, depending on how things are situated, right? Depending on if everything is in your name versus your landlord's name, etc., you may or may not be able to pay online. Okay, so I just paid an internet bill for a friend at the OXO. My friend is out of the city and she has guests in her home that need the internet very, very cash society. Guys, I love traveling. And while of course I do miss my friends and family, I also just miss my country sometimes. Understanding the rules, understanding the language, understanding the customs, under like just understanding everything. Yeah, I miss that sometimes. So big picture with all the things I miss, I still say travel is worth it. I still say living abroad, possibly for years and years and years is absolutely worth it. So don't let this list make you feel like you're going to hate being here. I hope I have not given that impression, 
But yeah, the people that tell me they literally don't miss anything but friends and family astound me because there's so many good things about every country. It's not literally just the people that you miss. And the ninth thing that I miss is RV life. Honestly, traveling the US in the RV is one of the highlights of my life. We only did it for five months, but guys, the US is gorgeous and there's just so much to see and do. RV life is definitely a lifestyle that I plan on going back to once I'm done with Mexico. RV living is definitely a lifestyle that I enjoyed. I think that there's definitely a learning curve to RV life similar to, you know, living in Mexico or in another country, but oh, the beauty just the beauty and the peace that came from traveling the US in an RV. I definitely miss just the gorgeousness of my country. And so I hope you found this video helpful. And if you are curious to know the things Alex misses and his opinions, then I would highly recommend checking this video out where Alex lets me know. He doesn't always like it. Tell me something you miss about being in the US. Pumpkin pie. They don't have pumpkin pies here. I like pumpkin pie. It's not that big of a deal. Would you rather live somewhere in Mexico or somewhere in the US? RV life versus Mexico life. What is the worst part about living in Mexico?